In this video, we're gonna discuss a little bit of the thermodynamics of batteries and discuss some types of batteries and the chemical reactions which make them work. So a battery generally could be just defined as an electrochemical cell which converts chemical energy into electrical energy. So it makes use of the spontaneous uh, Gibbs energy which is uh, produced during some kind of chemical reaction, converts that into electrical energy, which we can use to power all sorts of devices, and even perhaps the one with which you are listening to this uh, recording right now. So two main classes of batteries include primary and secondary. So for a primary battery, um, that would be a battery which is single use. So it's single use it's not rechargeable and the reactions which occur inside of that battery are irreversible so during the course of the battery's operation perhaps the electrodes get consumed perhaps whatever kind of uh, intricate topology is inside the battery gets uh, gets irreversibly destroyed the point is that the battery cannot be recharged and it cannot be used more than once however that occurs and then conversely for secondary batteries in a secondary battery you can use those multiple times so multi-use you can recharge them as long as they will continue to hold charge and the reactions which occur have to be reversible in order for you to be able to uh, plug it into some power source uh, charge it up and then it is capable of generating energy spontaneously from there again Okay, so some types of each of these cases. So some kinds of primary batteries. Those would include mercury batteries and solid lithium batteries. Some kinds of secondary batteries would be some other kinds of batteries you might have heard of, such as lead acid batteries, um, lithium ion batteries, and also nickel cadmium batteries. So those cover a wide uh, variety of uses and are in uh, quite a few different objects. Uh, you might be interested in looking up the kind of battery which is powering the kind of devices that you use, whether those be you know, uh, various electronics, um, the battery inside your car, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so the chemical reactions which are operating inside uh, some examples of these batteries. So for the mercury battery, as is pretty typical for uh, primary batteries. So we have a chemical reaction here where we have solid zinc reacting with solid mercury oxide going one direction, note that this is not reversible, to solid zinc oxide plus liquid mercury. So the Gibbs energy, <clears throat> and thus the EMF for such a reaction like this, we know that the Gibbs energy is equal to the standard Gibbs energy plus RT times the natural log of the reaction quotient. But the reaction quotient in this case is, well, it's the activity of the mercury liquid times the activity of zinc oxide divided by the activity of zinc times the activity of mercury oxide. But the thing you'll notice is that all of these are in condensed phase, solid, 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 and liquid. So the activity of a solid is just one under reasonable pressures, and the activity of a liquid is just one under reasonable pressures. Those are all condensed phases. So your reaction quotient is just equal to one, which means its logarithm is zero, which means that the Gibbs energy is gonna be equal to the standard Gibbs energy at all times during the battery's operation. So similarly, your E cell is going to be equal to your E naught cell at all times as well. And for this reaction, that is a, going to be a constant output voltage of 1.35 volts. So during the entire life cycle of its operation, because all of these phases, all of these chemical species are in condensed phase, their activities are all one, and they always operate at the standard EMF, which is 1.35 volts. 
And then conversely, if we have a lead acid battery, which is rechargeable, that the reaction which occurs in a lead acid battery looks like the following. We have solid lead plus lead oxide. Again, solid. So O2, so this would be a lead 4 ion, I guess. Plus 2 moles of sulfuric acid, which is aqueous. And this reaction is reversible, going to 2 moles of solid lead sulfate plus 2 moles of liquid water. So in this direction, we would define that as discharge. That is a really terrible writing of that word. Okay, discharge. And in the other direction, we would call that charging. So the reaction is naturally spontaneous in this direction where it's discharging. But if you put an input of energy, you can charge the battery for some later use. Okay, and then our reaction quotient for this here would be, we have the activity of water squared times the activity of lead sulfate, also squared because of that coefficient, divided by the activity of solid lead times the activity of lead oxide times the square of the activity of H2SO4 squared. But again, you see most of these are in their are in uh, condensed phases. Water is liquid, lead sulfate is solid, lead is solid, lead oxide is solid. So in fact, the only thing which is going to affect the Gibbs energy of reaction and thus affect the EMF, the voltage of the battery output, is it's going to be basically proportional to the inverse square of the concentration of sulfuric acid. So it's really only the sulfuric acid which is going to control what the EMF and what the output voltage of a lead ba acid battery is. And so this reaction occurs and it goes forward and it goes forward and it gets less spontaneous and less spontaneous as all this H2SO4 disappears. Then you charge it, you charge it back up, your, your sulfuric acid appears again, and you're ready for a higher voltage and more amounts of discharge as the life cycle of the battery continues.